Welcome back to Snippet Coder and we are back with another video and this is the new video of our code snippet series. In this video, we will learn how to create a dynamic field in runtime. So this is our application. You can see here we have the form here. We have the username. Then we have the age here. Then we have the email ID here and inside the email ID, we can create the multiple email IDs by clicking on the this button and it will create a new text box on the runtime. If I again click on that and the add button will be come in the last of the text box. We can also remove that text box and we can also have the validation also if I click click on the save you can see here we are getting the validation email one can't be empty and email two can't be empty if i remove this one if i again click here it will say email one can't be empty and that field has been removed so if we put the proper information here if you put here raman then we have the age here and we can add the new email id here and if i put the first email id as a raman at the rate snippet coder dot com then we have sing at the rate snippet coder dot com so now if i click on the save here then you can see here in the emails we are getting the array of two emails and if i click again on the add button and if i add new email id here test at the rate gmail.com so now if i click again on the save you can see here we are getting the three email id save so before starting the video if you are new to our channel subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos thank you So first of all, we will get the model file and the name of the model file is user underscore model dot dot file. And here we will create the class class user model. And then we have the string username. And then we have the int type of user age and we will make it as a null label. And then we have the list type of strings emails. This one also we will make a null label. And then we will create here constructor user model. This dot username. This dot age. This dot emails. And then we will create the function for two JSON map string dynamic two JSON and here we have to create one variable final map string dynamic data is equal to new of map string dynamic then here we have data username is equal to this dot username then we have data user age is equal to this dot user age then we will have emails is equal to emails and from here we will return data so what we did here we created one class file that is user model and here we created three variables first one is a username then we have the user age then we have the emails and the email we are passing here list type of strings then we have a constructor here and then we have to create one to json function to show how the json is creating in in the form so now let's move to our code part so we are using here snippet code a util package for our form and all and if you don't want to use that package you can also use uh, that text field and all and and here we are using snippet underscore coder underscore utils and a version we are using 1.0.8 so now we will create one file here that is home underscore page dot dot file and we will make it as a stateful visit home page so we will create one variable that is used for our global form key and here we have global key form state global key is equal to global key form state so now we will get the variable for our model file that is user model user model is equal to user model and here we have to create the visit here visit underscore ui visit and this will be used for our form visit and in the build we, we are going to use a scaffold visit and here we will pass app bar and we have app bar title we are using here user form and we are using a text visit and then we have the background color and we are using a color start radiation and then we have the body and the body we are using here this ui visit so from this visit we will return here return new form and because we are going to use the form here for that purpose we have to use a form visit and here we have the key and the key we are passing a global key and then we have the child here and we are using a single child scroll view because we need the scroll bar and all and then we have the child here and we are using a padding and the padding we are using here as inside dot all 10 then we have the child here and we are using a column visit then we will create our first child and that is our username and for that we have to use a form helper and that will be a part of our snippet code utils and we are using a form helper dot input visit with label so here icon we can put any icon icon start web icon then we have the key name and that is we are putting a username and then we have the label here we are putting a user name and then we have the hint text and we are not putting any hint text here and then we have the on validate value and here we will check 
if on validate well dot is empty then we will return here username can't be empty and else by default we will return here null then we have the on sale and here we will pass our value here this dot model user model dot username is equal to on save well and this this will assign our the value of that on save value to our user model and then we have the initialize value and we are passing a user model dot username because it is nullable that's why we have to put here check here then we have the border color and we are using here colors of radius in then we have the border focus color we are using the same color then the border radius we are putting here 2 then we have the font size we are putting here 14 then we have the label size and we are using here 14 so now let's run the application and before that we have to map this home page in our main dot dot file and here we have to remove all the unnecessary code so now let's run the application to see is it working or not so here you can see we are getting that form here so now here we have to remove our we can change the icon also here and we can change it to user verify user also we can put here padding here padding left zero padding right zero so now you can see here alignment is coming perfectly fine here so now we will copy this and we will paste here for our another column that is age column and here we will put user age can't be empty and here we will change it to user age this one to user age and we don't require any icon here and for that we will remove here show prefix icon and we will make it to false here so now you can see here we are not getting any icon here and here we will change user model dot age user age is equal to on save value and here we are getting value into to a string so that's why we have to parse here we have int dot parse and we will pass the value here so here we will create one more visit here and we will name it as a visit underscore emails container and from here we will return column visit and here we have cross access alignment and we are using a cross access alignment dot start and then we have the main access alignment and we are using a main access alignment dot start and then we have the children's here and the first children we have to put here text visit and the name we are using here email addresses text align we are using here text align dot left and then we have the style here and we are using here text style font size we are using a 14 and then we have our font weight and we are using a font weight dot bold and we will call this container after our age text box so you can see here that text is coming but that is coming in the center and for that we have to change here and here we have to put cross access alignment dot start then we have the main access alignment main access alignment dot start so now you can see here that text is coming now properly so but there is some spacing issue for that we have to put here padding and here this text visit we will wrap with our padding variable and here we will put 10 so now you can see here the alignment is coming properly fine so here we have to create one more visit and here we have visit email ui and here we have to pass the index here and then from here we will return padding and the padding we are using a edge inside dot all 10 and then we have the child here inside the child we are going to use our row visit and here we have row because here we have to show text box with our two buttons one is for add button and one is for delete button for that purpose we have to use a row visit and here we have the children's here and the first children we are going to use a flexible visit and we will copy this one we have to copy this whole code and we have to paste here and here we will do some modifications and here we will put email underscore dollar underscore then we have the index here key name will be with the index and the label name we are not going to use because we have to use a input field visit without label then here we have to put the validation and we will have email then we have to pass here that index and here we will pass index plus one because by default the index will be zero and for that reason we have to put here plus one so that whenever it will show that uh, text box name here email one two three that will show in the correct manner and then here we will have user model dot emails and here we will pass the index here so that value will we set on the particular index rest of the code is same so now we will just for the testing we will call this function email ui from here and we will pass here index as a zero or one so here you can see we are getting our email text box also but that add button is missing so now let's add those functionality also so after that our flexible visit we will pass here and here we have size box and the width we are passing at 35 and the child we are going to show here icon button and here we have the icon here and we are going to use a icon then here we will show 
I can start add underscore circle. And then we have the color here and we are using a color start green color. And then we have the on press event that we will cover later on. So here you can see we are getting that add button also. Same way we will do for our remove button also. And we will just copy this and we will paste here. And say we will remove, we will change the icon to remove underscore circle. And the color we will change it to red isn't. Now you can see here we are getting two buttons. First one is add button, second one is a delete button. So now here we have to put some logic here add button will be always show to the last text box and that delete button will be always show to all text box except to the first text box because we have to make sure we should adding one email id to the form that's why we are not going to show that delete button to our last that you can say first text box and for that logic we have to put here and here we will put here visibility visit and we will cut this whole code and we will paste here and here we will put the logic for the visible and the logic is if index is equal to user model dot emails dot length minus one and here we will put explanatory sign and we are getting here null error because we have not added this email to our model and for that we have to put here override void initialize state super dot initialize state and here we will add user model dot emails is equal to new of list string empty growable true then we have to add here user model dot emails dot add and we will add that dummy value here so now reload the application to see so now we are not getting any error here because we have initialized our email array so now we will put that logic and for the remove button we have to put the logic here and we will we are going to use the visibility visit here and then we have the visible and here we will put if index is more than zero then we will not going to show the remove button so here you can see we are that we are not able to see that remove button because the index we have added zero so now instead of calling here by hard coding of index we will call here with our dynamic and for that we have to use here list view dot separate it and here we have the builder here before that we have to put here shrink wrap true and then we have the physics and we are using a scroll physics and then we have the item counts we will put here user model dot emails dot length and then we have our separator builder and we will put here context and then we have the index and we are showing here divider and then we have the item builder here and here we have context and then we have the index and from here we will return column visit because we are going to have the multiple email text box and all then we have the children's here from here we will call email ui and we will pass the index here so now reload the application to see so now this text text box is coming dynamically so now suppose if i increase that and here if i add one more dummy here and if i reload the application so now you will able to see two text box first one is a default text box second one we are getting here optional text box then here we are getting that add button and remove button so if i I again add one more entry and if I reload the application so now you can see here we are getting three text box first one we are not getting any add or remove button then in the second we are getting here remove button in the third one we are getting here add and remove both and the that what we have added the logic for if the remove will be shown to all text box except for our first text box and that add button will be always shown to our last text box so now let's move further to have that implementation of that add or remove button so here we will add one function here void add email control and here we will call set state user model dot emails dot add and we will add here dummy value so what it will do it will add the new text box with the dummy value in the emails and we will create one more function here void remove email control and here also we will call set state then we will check here if user model and here we will pass the parameter of index and here we will check if user model dot emails dot length is more than one then we are going to call this and here we have user model dot emails dot remove add and here we will pass the index so what we are doing here we have created a function for remove email control then here we are passing the index then we are calling that set state so that it will set the state of that model and all and we are checking here if that emails dot length is more than one that means we are not at that last text box you can say we don't have the single text box we have more than one text box then only we are removing that control and then we are calling here user model dot emails then we have to call remove at and we have to pass here index so now we have to call these function and this add email control we have to call from here 
in that our add icon and here in the remove we have to call here remove email control and here we have to pass the index the index will be this one so now reload the application to see is it working or not before that we have to remove the dummy entries and here we have to reload again so now you can see here we are getting only single text box so now if i click on the add button you can see here we are getting the second text box and also we are getting both add and remove button if i again click on the add button you can see here add button is coming to the, our last control so if i remove any of that text box suppose if i remove second one it will remove and it will show us that add button to our last control so now let's move further to have that form saving and all to see that json how the json is creating for this form and here we have to also show the validation and all we have to create one function bool validate and save and here we have final form is equal to global key dot current state and then here we will check if form dot validate and then we will call the save function form dot save and from here we will return true as we will return here so here after that email container we have to create here new center and here we have to call here center visit and from here we have a child and we are going to use a form helper dot submit button and button name we are going to put here save and then we have the on tap event and here we will check if validate and save then we will print here user model dot to json so now reload the application so here if i click on the save you can see here we are getting all the validations so if i put here name then i will put here age then here if i again click on the save you can see here error has been gone for two fields so now if i click add here and if i click again save you can see here we are also getting the validation for the second text box also so here if i put an email id raman at it, abcd .com, if i click save you can see here validation has been gone from there so now let me open the console here so now if i put here snippet coder at the rate gmail.com then if i click on the save you can see here we are getting all the json here so now you can see here we are getting username raman user age 20 then i am getting all the email id here we are getting two email ids because we have two text box so now if i add one more text box for the email id so here we are getting the issue here because so now you can see here that value has been changed to raman 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 because we have not changed that save value and all so here in the initial value we have not changed we have to change it to user age dot to string then we we will have here emails also and that one we will pick from our array now reload the application so here if i put raman i am putting a age 20 then we will have email id raman at gmail.com snippet coder at gmail.com and now if i click again on the add button now you can see here that values are getting maintained here so if i put here new email id here email at it gmail.com so now if i click on the save you can see here we are getting three email id instead of two email ids because we have three email ids in our form so that's all in this video i hope you like the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel like comment share i will come back soon with another awesome videos thank you for watching the video